This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now, as it's Tuesday, you know the drill by now, I sit here for 15 minutes or thereabouts and blether on about uh, five of my favourite things in a particular category. And today we're talking about Steely Dan performances. Now, I've been looking forward to doing this video and dreading it in equal measure because... Um, yeah, probably one of the hardest things to do is if I've got to only have five and those are the rules and you know you've got to kind of try and keep some sort of semblance of a structure to these videos um, then picking five Steely Dan tunes was just you know ridiculous I could have put frankly the entire Aja album on or the entire Royal Scam album and the entire uh, Pretzel Logic album and the entire Can't Buy a Thrill album you know um, I just love everything on those albums. But what I've tried to do is go for my favourite albums and pick a track that, for me, is always the track when I'm listening to the album that I look forward to the most. You know, that's that's the one that I think, oh, yeah, it's that one next, isn't it? So this this is the list that I came up with uh, based on that uh, selection method, beginning with... Ricky, don't lose that number. Yes, from the 1974 release Pretzel Logic. A um, couple of interesting, I think, facts about this. It features Jim Gordon on drums. Now, if that name um, is at all familiar to you, it's probably because you might know him as the drummer in Derek and the Dominoes, who um, also wrote the uh, the famous kind of coda, that sort of piano part at the end of uh, Layla. So there you go. Uh, uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter on guitar and... You know, there are a lot of rumours about this song, about what it's actually about. Some people I did hear from, um, you know, someone very reliable many years ago that uh, this was a song dedicated to Rick Derringer. Um, which isn't true, apparently. There's also uh, copious rumours going around that, um, you know, Don't Lose That Number is a reference to the old left-handed jazz tobacco. Um but it's more mundane than that. The Ricky in question is a lass that uh, Donald Fagan had a bit of a thing for when he was a lad at college. So there you go. It's um, what can I tell you about this? It's just just joyful, celebratory, and it's it, it does that thing that um, many Steely Dan songs uh, do. And I mentioned this in the live stream um, a couple of weeks ago, or I think, was it last week? Can't remember. I'd had beer by then. Um, it does that thing that a Beach Boys song does. It just makes it makes you feel like you're in the height of summer. You know, that there's that Californian sunshine shining through all of Steely Dan's tracks, and this one in particular, and I absolutely love it for that reason alone, but for many others as well, which is why it's on the list. Next. Midnight Cruiser. Okay, uh, one of my favourite tracks off the uh, first album, Can't Buy a Thrill. Um, I first encountered Steely Dan via like a compilation album in the 80s at some point and uh, it had this track on it. And you, you know when you're listening to a compilation album, you can often um, hear... The, uh, okay, so that track is obviously from the beginning of the career. They're still kind of finding the way a little bit on that one, and then you you listen to another track and you think, okay, that's that, that's them. They've they, they've kind of honed their sound now. Well, I was surprised to learn that Midnight Cruiser is actually off the first album because to me it's just fully formed Steely Dan. Um, you know, it's even though it's not. Um, can't remember who it is that's singing on this. Um, uh, it'll come to me, but it's not um, Donald Fagan singing because uh, he was a bit, um, I don't know, stage fright, nervous about uh, recording his voice uh, in those early days. But it just does sound like a classic Steely Dan song. It's like their sound was already, you know, kind of fully formed by the, the they did this track. The song itself is basically, um, you know, from the viewpoint of a, a middle-aged uh, man reflecting on times um, gone past. In in, in some ways, it's um, it's similar in in subject matter to a song like Bruce Springsteen's Glory Days. Um, you know, it's. 
people go on about the, um, the, the the lyrics of Steely Dan songs, and once you start digging into them, yes, they are beautifully, wittily observed and, and cleverly written, but it wasn't the lyrics that drew me to their music in the first place, if I'm honest. It was um, just the absolutely beautiful, cleverly constructed uh, chord sequences and, you know, catchy hooks and superb musicianship. The, the thing that... Um, a lot of Steely Dan songs, this one included, does prove to me, is that you can have a hit record that's catchy and accessible, but doesn't have to be dumbed down and chasing the lowest common denominator. And for that reason alone, I think it deserves a place on the list. Next. Kid Charlemagne. Yes, indeed. Uh, a track from the Royal Scam album. Um, apparently a true-ish story about a notorious LSD chemist called Oswald Stanley from San Francisco, um, you know, who was a well-known character in, in that parish at the time. Uh, it's, I mean, you know the song. You don't need to tell me why. You, you don't need me to tell you why it is just a work of genius. Again, for me, b b b long before I knew that the kind of backstory of the song and, and what it was about, it was just the overall feel uh, that that got me with it. It's, you know, I mean, the Larry Carlton solo. I mean, come on. If that isn't a perfect example of, you know, just a, a beautiful guitar solo, it, I'd, I'd go so far as to say, and this is coming from a Gary Moore fan, by the way, you know, that um, if I had to pick a perfect guitar solo, it would probably be this, so, this solo of Larry's on Kid Charlemagne. Um, and once again, it's just, it, it feels like the height of summer, even on a Dreek, damp, foggy, drizzly, miserable day like we've got in Red Car today. I can put that on and feel, you know, like it's summertime. So again, that's uh, why it's on the list. Next. Deacon Blues. Again, another song, um, you know, about um, a bit, a bit like uh, Midnight Cruiser. Someone reflecting on, um, you know, a disappointment, you know, and and kind of a life that didn't turn how out how they wanted to. Uh, basically, a guy who wanted to be a jazz saxophonist, and that would put or sax player, if you prefer, that would uh, kind of make everything uh, in his life, you know, hunky dory. Um, like many Steely Dan songs, it's, um, you know, a song that's, you know, kind of written from the perspective or about the underdog. And th again, I could say this about all of the songs on here, but it's, it's proof that, you know, you can have a exquisitely played piece of music with perfect polished production that doesn't have to sound sterile there's still humanity in there you can still hear you know the kind of wry humor in there and you can still you know kind of get a sense of you know it's not just um you know a bunch of people playing and you know th th there's feeling going on and i often mention this as well you know th you, you'll know this quote by now when uh, th there's a moment in in uh, the recording process where the musicians are in the studio and you know there's just a realization a collective realization that you know th they're playing something that's going to become a classic and they raise their game accordingly. And I think that is very much in evidence on this song. So there you go. Next. My Old School. Okay, yes. Um, once again, what have I written down here as the bullet points for this song? Humour, catchy hooks, perfect production, humanity. So, I mean, that sums it up really. That could sum up any, I think, Steely Dan song. Um, it comes from Countdown to Ecstasy, which isn't... I've got to tell you, one of my favourite Steely, Steely Dan albums, but I do always love to listen to this track. You know, it's, again, you've got those those chorus hooks that are impossible to get out of your head after you've heard them once, but it's not just about, you know, kind of treating the, the, the listener, um, you know, to the lowest common denominator and beating them overhead with a chorus. I mean, it's a song that tells a story, apparently, about um, a drugs bust at uh, Becker and Fagan's old college. And, you know, it's that's what they would do. They would take, um, you know, real-life situations, and whereas anybody else would just kind of, you know, think of that as, oh, yeah, that happened, didn't it? They would kind of write a, a work of genius of a song about it and um, immortalise it forever. Um, so there you go. Those are, today, my top five Steely Dan tracks. Um, 
ask me again next week and it might be somewhat but i suspect not completely different let me know what your five uh, favorite steely dan tunes are and maybe a word or two uh, in the comments section um about why each one is on your list and you know it's very very difficult to justify it isn't it really you know um sometimes you just like a piece of music because it makes you feel all warm and gooey inside and um you know th this band for me uh, do have that that effect that is impossible to put into words but have a go anyway if you feel like doing so so there you go folks uh, that's pretty much it for today hope you've enjoyed this little discussion and maybe it's uh, reminded you to uh, go and check out you know some tracks that you haven't heard before or haven't heard in a while i've linked to all of these tracks down below in the description if um, if you want to go and check them out but for now I'll bid you all a good day and say, oh, don't forget the live stream on Friday. I mentioned that in all the videos, 5 p.m. UK time. We sit and have a beer and a chat. It's great fun, great way to kick off the weekend. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.